Hi, fishy folks, and welcome to Michael's Fish Room. Guys, don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com for some pretty cool guppies. Today, we're gonna talk about the inch per gallon rule. Now, as some of you may know, I uh, got in trouble on a uh, Facebook group because I said, and I quote, that is a stupid rule. I didn't call anyone stupid. I said the rule was stupid. And one of the admins proceeded to gently tell me uh, to, you know, basically don't call someone stupid. And in typical Michael's fish rooms fashion, I went off on her. Anyway, I then made a rant video. There will be a link here to that rant video. But let's talk about the inch per gallon rule. We've all heard it. We've probably all been told it, and we might have all followed it at some point early in our fish keeping career. So what is the inch per gallon rule? That means, in general, you can have one inch of fish per one gallon of water. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say to debunk this myth, if you will, is, and I've used this a hundred times in arguments, does that mean I can put a 10 inch Oscar in a 10 gallon tank? Let's just visualize this, if we will. I happen to have a prop here, a 10 gallon tank. Hi. And a tape measure. So this is 10 inches. It's upside down, you can't see. I'm not doing this very good. 10 inches. So look at that. This fish in this 10 gallon tank, 10 inch Oscar, probably would have a trouble would have trouble turning around. It's also half the length of the tank. But the rule says one inch per gallon. Okay. Myth debunked, if you will. Stupid rule. We've all believed it. Now we know why it's not a good rule. What about if you had 10 one inch cardinal tetras in a 10 gallon. That would be okay, but you could probably have 20 of those in a 10 gallon without a problem. Normal water change schedule, normal filtration, nothing you know out of the ordinary. But could you have two five inch plecos in a 10 gallon? Could you have one five inch pleco in a 10 gallon? Could you have 10 one inch plecos in a 10 gallon? See. The rule just doesn't make any sense. It's not even a good rule of thumb. It's a bad rule of thumb. Let's talk about stocking levels and how do you decide what you can keep in your fish tank. The first thing you need to know is how much water do you want to change and how often? Here's why. In a 10 gallon tank, if you had say three male guppies and it was moderately planted, you probably would never have to actually change water. Hold on, let's, let's rewind. Why do we change water? Well, quick lesson in fish keeping. We all know, maybe we don't, we all know the nitrogen cycle. Fish poop and pee creates ammonia. Bacteria takes that ammonia and changes it to nitrites, nitrites with an I. Then another bacteria takes the nitrites and uh, converts it to nitrates with an A, nitrates. The reason why we change water for the most part is to remove the nitrates. Yes, there are some hormones and some other stuff. Water changes help remove, but by and large, we change water to remove nitrates. Now, if you have a planted tank, real plants that is, the plants will take in that nitrate and help them grow. That's why in a heavily planted tank or a moderately planted tank that's lightly stocked, that's fed properly, you will actually never ever have to change the water. You'll have to add water due to evaporation, but you probably will never actually have to change water due to uh, nitrate toxicity. Okay, so let's go back to our, our little discussion here. 10 gallon tank, 
What can you keep in it? It depends on how much water you want to change. I have 100 guppies in a 10 gallon tank. Why? I do 10% water changes daily. That's why. Do you want to do a 10% water change daily? Do you want to do a 50% water change weekly? Sometimes people ask, or people say, I do a 50% water change weekly or a 25% water change weekly. And I, I ask why, and in most cases, they don't know. What you should do, and I learned this from somebody else, Corey from Aquarium Co-op in one of his videos a couple years back, is measure the nitrate level at a specific time, say one week. When it reaches a specific number, parts per million, 20, 30, 40, whatever it might be, that's when you change water, 50%. Then you measure again until it reaches that specific level that you've set, say 40 parts per million. And that's when you change water. Now, a couple things that, that uh, affect this is how much food are you feeding? I overfeed my fish tanks quite a bit because uh, I want the fish to grow fast so I can sell them. If you feed your tank moderately or lightly, even less pollution in the water, boom, less water changes. So, so far we have how often and how much water do you want to change and how much do you feed and how often do you feed? Twice a day, once a day, once every other day. I hear people say they, they feed their fish six days and then fast. They have to be fast. Why? Why? Why do they have to fast? Um, also, what are you feeding your fish? Is it high quality food or is there a lot of fillers and junk that they're not going to digest and it's just going to come out the other end? All these things you need to take into account when you're talking about the inch per gallon rule. I almost said dollar per gallon because it's always on my head. Inch per gallon rule. Alright fishy folks, that's me debunking the inch per gallon rule. Now, let's talk about some other factors. What kind of fish are you gonna keep? Can you keep two five inch discus in a 10 gallon? No, they're not gonna be happy. There's not enough space for them to swim. But according to the rule you can, how about a 10 inch pleco? Certainly no, because the poop will be 20 inches long and you'll never be able to maintain water quality in that tank without doing massive water changes daily. Now, some people, crazy discus people, I don't want to mention their names, Ryan, like to change 100% water, 80% water in their discus tanks daily. They can overstock their, those tanks, but they don't because they're discus. Me, I'm looking at this 20 gallon guppy tank. There's probably a hundred guppies in there. It's a 20 gallon, not the 10, but a 20. Some of them are babies, some of them are adults. There's also java moss covering pretty much the entire bottom of the tank this deep. All that java moss is sucking up the nitrates. So I have to do, I don't have to do as much water changes. That's why you should keep a planet tank. But 10% water changes daily, heavy feeding, Heavy planted, I don't have a problem with nitrates. What if you have a big tank? So let's say you have a 100 gallon tank. Can you keep 10 10 inch fish in that tank? That equals 100 if I did my math right. 10 times 10, yeah. No, because there's probably not enough room for them to swim around. It's a silly rule. I understand we've all been told it. I understand we've all probably followed it, but now with some knowledge and the interwebs where you can Google stuff, instead of typing in Facebook, inch per gallon rule, type in Google, you'll get answers. You might get this video. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for my inch per gallon rant. It's not really a rant, it's just kind of a lesson. There are a lot of myths in fish keeping. There are a lot of things that people say work for them, but there's no scientific proof or it didn't work for someone else. Just because it doesn't work for someone else doesn't mean it won't work for you. 
Just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it will work for you. What I'm saying is use your judgment, go with your gut and a little research and you will more than likely be okay. Inch per gallon rule, not a good rule. Don't follow the rule.